Hey everybody, I'm Mark Walters with BigFanboy.com and I'm sitting here with Jamie Travis, the director of For a Good Time Call, which uh, I was telling the girls, this is my second time to see this. I really, really enjoyed it. I actually couldn't wait to see it again. Great. Which, you know, as a film critic, that's not always something you can say about a movie. I mean, especially in, in this year, there haven't been a lot of really standout films, and right. this was one that I just I I've, found. I've been too busy making this film to watch anything, so I'll take <laughs> you're your not missing it. anything, to yeah. be honest with you. But no, it was it was a lot of fun, and it and the one thing which I think you guys sort of referenced last night in the Q and A was that it reminded me of kind of a better time of comedies, mm -hmm. like back in the days when we would see, you know, girls headlining comedies, and, yeah. and you just don't see that anymore. And yeah. I, I would think that's probably one of the the most fun aspects is to be able to sort of bring that back to yeah. the masses a bit. Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm such a big fan of female-driven comedies from the 80s. Yeah. Shelley Long, she's an under underrated. <laughs> I loved star. hearing you throughout the love for love Shelley Long. Love Shelley Long. Long. Yeah. I do think Outrageous Fortune is a near perfect film. <laughs> uh, and it's funny, it, people have been asking me about kind of preparing for this film and whether I watched phone sex movies and and I didn't. And, you know, every kind of every image of phone sex is so dark and so bleak and, and maybe the reality of phone sex <laughs> is dark and bleak yeah. sometimes but you know we took such a stylized approach to it and for me it just bounced off the page when I first read the script as you know as a call out to these really female empowering 80s comedies with Bette Midler and Goldie Hawn and every woman that I love so yeah. Well, and I, as I was telling them also, it, it seems like inherently the idea of phone sex is there's so much comedy just mm -hmm. in the concept of it. You know, I mean, yeah. everybody, it's one of those things that everybody's familiar with it, but nobody really kind of knows the inner workings of it. Yeah. And you would have to think that, that just as a business that that would be so many moments of, of comedy would come out of that, I would think. so. You would think. <laughs> you would think. I mean, people really let their guard down or people really you know, people become another person when they're on the phone, when they're protected by, by the phone or a, a pink box phone in this case. Yeah. Uh, our pretty pink phone, but you know, and I think that applies to the, the operators as well and so much of what this film is about is, you know, these girls finding themselves and, and through this, ironically, through this very mediated um, uh, process of phone sex, but you know, as a result they both kind of put their guards let their guards fall and you know become the best versions of themselves yeah this film also has a great look to it like it, it just stylistically yeah uh, there's so many shots that I really enjoyed uh, one of my favorite scenes is actually kind of that point of view shot of them back oh, and great. forth I really yeah. enjoyed that and and just the way that you framed a lot of those mm -hmm. shots and I know a lot of that comes from your background and doing short films and things like that but again that was something that we talked about was that they they were so happy to bring you on board to this yeah. because they loved your style, and, yeah. and I would imagine that being able to bring that kind of style to something like this and have it be really funny, yeah. that's just a... Well, it's a funny, my point. films usually have a lot more like upfront style than this film, yeah. you know? Um, and when I read the script, I knew immediately that if I just kind of plunked my style onto this story that it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And so this was a real, this was a, a really new experience for me. You had to kind me. of pull back a little bit. I did have to pull yeah. back. <laughs> and, you know, but I always knew the best version of this movie was the focus is completely on this, this relationship mm -hmm. between Lauren and Katie, and it's a character-driven movie. And for me as the director to impose, you know, mad style in every, in every shot or every transition, I knew that was going to be a mistake. But, you know, like I said, these 80s movies, uh, big business, uh, hello again, whatever, they, th those movies have True a polish Hills. about them. True Beverly <laughs> Hills. They have a polish about them and a prettiness about them. Yeah. And it felt appropriately 80s to, to kind of push the prettiness. Um, I worked with an amazing DP named James Laxton and an amazing production designer named Sue Tebbin. And together we just, oh, and an amazing costume designer named Maya Lieberman. And yeah, the combination. Fantastic dresses. And, yeah, thank you. Wonderful I'll stuff. tell Maya you said so. Yes. Um, and the combination of this is, I mean, that's kind of how I, I'm a very visual director, especially in, in the, in, with my short films, but mm -hmm. the combination of set design, which is my background, and costume design, you know, with beautiful light, I mean, that's, I live for that. Yeah. So, you know, we wanted to make a, a candy-colored, Almodovar-inspired uh, uh, raunch com. So, it's, you know, I feel like this is going to look, it looks very different than most films that are like this, I think most commercial comedies. But yeah. I, think, I think therein lies the surprise. I think people are going to see this movie and they're going to think it's one thing and they're going to come out seeing that it's 
completely yeah. another. Well, it's just, I mean, me being a child of the 80s, I, I, I love the callback to that era. Mm-hmm. Because that, for me, I think that was an era of filmmaking that there's so many wonderful things about it to look back on. And then when you look at, like, the 90s, it seemed like things just got yeah. lazy. And I don't know when we got so yeah. lazy in, in terms of movie making. Well, it's funny because in the 90s, women, women were always the leads in <clears throat> suspense thrillers. Yes. Which yeah. is another kind of, like, this kind of terrible period of filmmaking in the early 90s but you know I was I was at the age where I was obsessed with everything I was I was imbibing but um, Hand That Rocks the Cradle yeah. Sleeping with the Enemy which is probably the worst of the bunch and oh what, the, the, it was all, it was single white female yeah uh, you know, the, that's kind of women went from the comedy domain to that domain, and then everything got so male-driven, and you know, so it's so. When I read the script, I was so relieved because I had been reading so many testosterone-driven scripts, which I just, I just can't relate to that perspective. And I just, you know, love women, and I love that this script and this film celebrate women and celebrate female sexuality, which is something that nobody talks about. Well, I feel like entertainment in some ways is cyclical. I think like eventually things always come back around. Yeah. And so hopefully we are seeing a resurgence of that type yeah. of film. I did want to talk to you about uh, sort of the whole film festival thing and, and like, you know, showing this at Sundance and mm-hmm. then and then with you guys traveling around all over the place, what are some of the things that you've seen or what are some of the feedback that you're getting from the audiences and like what's been the most gratifying part of that? Well, I can't, I mean, it's so many things have been so gratifying. Yeah. We made this film so quickly that you're 16 constantly, days. we shot it in 16 Unreal. days, Unreal. we edited it in a yeah. very short period of time and all of a sudden we were at Sundance and of course, so that was kind of our big first milestone yeah. um, and we had submitted a rough cut to them and you know, it was just, it was a very quick process and you have no time to second guess yourself and we took it to Sundance and it was what it was and the audience it was it was crazy how good the response was. Yeah. It was 1,300 people. They gave us a standing ovation. They laughed so hard I couldn't hear the goddamn movie. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, um, we were we were bought by Focus Features, which is hello. Does it get better than that? I yeah. don't think so. And now we're getting a commercial release, and we're seeing it. We've just been doing this promotional tour from Seattle to Boston, Atlanta, and now we're here in Dallas. Uh, and the response is across the board extremely positive yeah and you know I always knew it I always knew I mean I knew when I read the script and I knew the first day of shooting when we were shooting Ari on the bed having her side of the Kevin Smith phone call yeah. that, that that we that the tone of this film we were getting it right and that it was you know this balance between raunch and charm you know that we were getting it right on that first day and you know such relief but people are getting it people are getting it and I feel like people are starved Oh. Sorry, we have West Nile here, so I gotta make that happen. Oh, really? Yeah. What are the symptoms of West Nile? Because I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. I don't want to know. I have a thing on my elbow. <laughs> no, I think you're fine. I think okay. we would know if you were in trouble. But, uh, okay. but well, listen, honestly, and I, I, what you just mentioned was one of the reasons I wanted to see it a second time, because I think I missed some of the laughs. Yeah. So when you go see for a good time call, and you should, Go see it twice because you'll uh, you'll be laughing yourself so hard you'll miss some of those jokes. But yeah, it's great. Thank you so yeah. much for bringing Thank us to you. Dallas and making us part of the store. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's nice to, to meet you. Yeah.